It's the absolute latest rage right now. I mean, everyone who's anyone is doing it. Doing what, you didn't ask? Well, they're running their auxiliary trailers with these drill batteries, even though they actually power a whole line of other power tools. But what's the big fuss? Well, I'll show you, but I've got a couple twists to this story that you just may find interesting, because we're going to also talk about power banks and why you might want to ditch the idea of creating a whole dedicated and integrated power solution for your cargo trailer. Nope. Nope. Yep. Dibs. Light on. Light off. Light on. Light off. And check this out, it has a dimmer. But where is this power coming from? Well, from a setup like this, it can actually come from two different places. Power source number one, one of these cordless hand tools. But wait, there's more. With my modifications, it can actually come from two of these rigid batteries at the same time. That's right, I can run these in parallel if we so choose, just so we don't have to be swapping out these batteries. But let's break down what we've got here. Firstly, I am not going to take credit for this genius idea. There are quite a few videos out there of people doing this. I don't know who was the first to run with this concept, but I'll refer you to Kevin's video for a great intro on how to build one of these. Go watch it uh, in, in a minute. Take a look at this variation we've got here first, and then go watch it. What we've got here is the exact same setup he has, except I have modified it with this cam switch to select the power source and, of course, these two rigid batteries. You, of course, can choose whichever power tool accessory battery that suits you best. You just have to get the correct cradles here to receive those batteries. But before we open up this mystery box to show you what's different, let me tell you why I have implemented it in this way, and the answer just may surprise you. Power source number two. This here is our primary power bank. We use this when we go RVing as it can power my entire computer setup for 8 to 10 hours. This includes my laptop, my internet modem, or Starlink sometimes, external monitors, and uh, whatever. Using this XT90 connector here I mounted on the wall, and then adapting to our power bank, I can now bring this power bank with us on our smaller adventures to have extra runtime that far surpasses the rigid batteries. This means if we want to take this little trailer camping, or just on an extended day trip, we are fully powered for the entire day. But hang on, I've got a thought for you to chew on. This whole power bank setup, it's a perfect substitute for all the other dedicated mess and huge expense that we'd have to install if we wanted this whole trailer to be powered by traditional external batteries. I mean, think about it. We'd have to buy and install an inverter, a charger, the larger batteries themselves, and then, of course, a box like this, which we'll get to in just a moment. Here we have a reusable power bank that we can upgrade or take with us on another adventure in just a matter of seconds. No mess, no expensive components to install, it's just all fully contained. Plus, we can install solar panels on the top of our trailer, mount another power box down here, and feed that power right back into our power bank to charge it back up. Or we can just charge it back up by connecting it to an external shore power inlet if we so choose to install that. You can see that I'm actually using the 12 volt to XT60 connector that is used to charge the power bank from a vehicle. However, I'm using this cable in reverse by plugging into the power bank 12 volt out and then adapting it from the XT60 to an XT90 connector that we installed on the wall. Why am I using an adapter to an XT90? Well, because I ordered and installed the wrong one before I realized I had the wrong size. However, I did find that the XT90 connector might be a little bit easier to install into a box since it's larger and easier to attach. The great thing here is now with this cable, I can easily plug into a friend's power bank if we need a spare while we're out. You simply just cannot lose here, unless you're going hardcore and want to install very large batteries and have everything integrated, that is. But for the majority of us, this is the best alternative there can be. And believe me, I thought about this for a long, long time before I finally committed to this. So let's take a peek into this mystery box. Right away up top, you can see our fuse distribution area. All power going out of this box can be wired up to any of these fuse slots. We only have one at the moment, which is feeding into our overhead lights, but we're prepped for a whole lot more as we continue our build out. Down here, we have our, well, uh, a mess of other things. Peanut gallery, hold your comments. It's obvious I'm not an electronics engineer, so just cool it, okay? This is the best I could do with my first try. Yes, there are things I would do a bit differently a second time, but just to give you a quick overview, our main power sources come into this main cam switch, which are fused, of course, and then are distributed to this box. Since the power bank is outputting 12 volts, I can skip most of this and just route it to the fuse panel, but the power tool's battery situation is a bit different. Because these power tool batteries are typically more than 12 volts, that power must be routed through this DC to 
DC step down converter, which comes from this low voltage protector disconnect. As a side note, the rigid batteries supposedly have this low voltage cutoff built into them, so it should be theoretically impossible to destroy themselves from too much discharge. But not all manufacturers of these tool batteries have that built in, so just in case I decide to change battery manufacturers, we'll leave this in here so it's ready to go. Besides, I did set the voltage cutoff on this component to just a bit above where the batteries are supposed to cut off, just for extra insurance. And that's it. Now go watch Kevin's video on how to build the base version of this. If you really want to know how this thing is wired differently, let me know in the comments below. And if we have enough respondents, we'll make a follow-up on how I wired this up. As always, the links in the description below contain the products that I used. If you're interested in optimizing more of your life, I have another video right here that will boost your ability. Yes, you can do this too. All our videos are for average shows just like us. Just watch and enhance your life. As always, thank you for watching, my fellow Squatchologists, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.